We have known uh, kings and queens. We've known presidents and prime ministers. But the most extraordinary person whom I have ever known in my life is Matty Stepanek. That was President Jimmy Carter at the funeral of Matty Stepanek. Hard to believe it's been five years since Matty left us. He suffered from a rare form of muscular dystrophy, the same disease that claimed his three siblings. Matty was 13 when he died, but boy, did he make the most of those years. A poet, a peace advocate, a philosopher. He inspired millions with his message of hope and peace and finding your heart song. And now there's an incredible new book out about his life. Messenger, the legacy of Matty J.T. Stepanek and heart songs. Its author is Matty's mom, Jenny, and she joins us now from Washington, We're kind of celebrating Heroes Month here at uh, CNN. And I can paraphrase the president when I say, of all the heroes I've known, Matty was the greatest. Why, why the book, Jenny? Well, Larry, people have been asking me for years and years, e even before Maddie died, um, when are you going to share the story of Maddie's life? When are you going to share what it was like at home, in the hospital, on the road, with this child that we have his poetry and we have his peace essays? And I decided after he died that I needed to write this book sometime. Didn't want to do it too close to his death because I wanted the book to be a pure celebration of his life, his inspiration. And, and Larry, in the last five years, as I've held these, these stories in my heart, I have watched parks be named after my son. I've watched schools and libraries, uh, an international summit where teens gather from all over the world to study Maddie's message of hope and peace. People are talking about his possible sainthood. And I decided now it's five years after his death, it's time to tell the story so you know the child behind the inspiration. So that's why I chose to write it now. The last time we were together, you didn't have that breathing apparatus. Can you explain what that is, Jenny? Yes, um, this is a, it's a ventilator, much like Maddie had on the back of his wheelchair. I've opted to not use a trach tube. Um, you'll remember the trach that Maddie had in his neck. Uh, instead, for as yep. long as I can go uh, with this, uh, it's called non-invasive ventilation. And every time I put my mouth on the straw, it gives me a deep breath of air and keeps me breathing longer. You have the same disease Maddie had, right? Yes, I have the adult onset version of this condition. My four children inherited a fatal uh, during childhood version. Did not know I had this disease uh. when I was carrying my four children. Was very athletic during uh, their the pregnancies, and I actually, I didn't even use a wheelchair until Maddie, my youngest, was four years old. Never forget that first day I met Maddie when we did that interview, and I came in and didn't know what it was all about, and immediately engulfed in him and loved him and spent many hours with him, many times on the air with him, on the telethons with Jerry Lewis. The world saw him as a poet, a philosopher, a peacemaker, a celebrity. Mm -hmm. What was he like as an ordinary kid? Oh, he was as witty as he was wise, Larry. And, and I guess you do remember, because you knew him a little bit off screen as well. I remember you had lunch with him, dinner with him, uh, you played with him. Mm -hmm. Maddie loved a practical joke. Uh, so when Maddie said, remember to play after every storm, he meant that in a philosophical way, but also a day to day practical level. Uh, at home, uh, he was really just a good kid, uh, not a perfect kid, nobody's perfect, but what you saw was what you got. Maddie was as polite at home as he was out on the street, and while the world misses the poet and the peacemaker and the philosopher, I miss my little boy who gave me foot massages and left me little notes by my bed. Uh, I miss morning coffee and afternoon tea and debating with him over philosophy and politics. Um, I miss the private life behind uh, the public life that people got to know. Back with more of Jenny Stepanek, the book is Messenger, the legacy of an incredible little boy. 
introducing new Schwab. It's a terrific book, Messenger. Chapter 17, you, you write of Maddie's final days. How hard was that to do? Oh, Larry, I laughed writing parts of this book because I loved remembering Maddie. But writing Chapter 17, it tore my heart out. I, I actually had to write it differently than I had done the other chapters. Uh, the other chapters I'd put together stories and edit and chat it over with someone else. Chapter 17, I essentially just sat down and wrote it from word one to the last word in the chapter. Um, and, and Larry, what was even harder than writing this chapter was I read this book for audiobook. Uh, getting through that chapter took an inner strength that um, I wasn't sure I had, but I evidently do have. <laughs> Did he, did he pass away as bravely as he lived? Yes, he did. Um, I am, I, I'm just, I'm always proud of my son. But his final months, he actually went into a coma in the spring of 2004. And nobody was sure that he'd ever wake up again. For whatever reason, I believed that Maddie would wake up. And in fact, he did. Uh, he was awake for about three weeks before he ultimately died. And his final words, he was almost 14, three weeks before his 14th birthday. And his death in his parting was making sure his mommy would be okay. Challenging me not to lie down in the ashes of his life. Challenging me to choose to inhale, not simply breathe to exist. And one of the most beautiful parts of his final weeks was um, there was a baby in the next bed in the ICU. And the baby started crying. And Maddie, who was in pure agony, his bones had been breaking, his body was twisted because of what this disease had done to him. Maddie started calling out for his nurse desperately, just calling out, I, I need a nurse, I need a nurse. And when the nurse came running into the room and she said, what is it, Maddie, what is it? His response was, the baby's crying. Please hold the baby, love the baby, because babies are God's gift to us. Babies are a gift of life. And so the nurse started crying, but she picked oh. up the baby and held the baby and rocked the baby. And that's what mattered to Maddie was to, he was always in the position of telling us it's going to be okay. And, and that was, I, I think that's why people were so drawn to him. Maddie was a peacemaker. Maddie mm. made us believe in peace. Mm. He didn't just say peace is possible. Maddie made us believe it. And Maddie made us want to reach inside of ourselves and be peace, think peace, say peace. And he was so very you, real behind the scenes and on camera. And he was like that even as he died. The book is Messenger, The Legacy of Maddie, J.T. Stepanek, Stepanek and Hartzong.